Okay, Knockouts Ring General update. Earlier this week, it was announced that TNA has signed a new female talent, a woman that I've mentioned a few times before, a woman that some of you just might have heard of. DNA, thank you for this one. Anyone who thinks the Knockouts division has been struggling lately has got to be happy about this. I damn sure know I am. You signed Josie. She's been a huge disappointment. You signed Daphne and Ashley Lane, uh, both of whom are good, but just good was not going to solve the problem. This one will work. If you use her the right way, this one will work. Now, please do yourselves a favor. Don't screw it up. Okay, don't debut Sarah Stock with a, a freaking Michelle Obama impersonator gimmick, uh, or, or like some Japanese geisha gimmick, complete with face paint and kimono that she then has to wrestle in, or some other BS. If you pull some crap like that, she's gonna flop. Alright? Just let her be herself, let her focus on doing what she does best, give her the Gail Kim push, and everything will work out just fine. That's all I've got to say about that. Okay, first I need to clarify something. In that email that I sent to TNA last week, I said that I was no longer going to support TNA as a company until they made changes to the product. Now, I'm not buying TNA merchandise anymore, and I'm adopting a zero tolerance policy when it comes to the pay-per-views. Now, granted, I am still following the show, but I'm watching it on a stream now, just so TNA doesn't get any money, any ratings points, any anything from my viewership. Not until the product improves, and this impact was a perfect example. Now, overall, this was a more or less enjoyable show, but there was still a lot of the crap that continues to hold this company down, crap that I will not tolerate anymore. The Abyss Therapy Session, stupid. The ODB thing with the, the video of all the wild animals humping each other, did we really need to see that? The Sarah Palin thing. They finally went and explained that Daphne is still doing the Palin gimmick just to piss off the beautiful people. Guess what? It still sucks. Get it off my TV. Daphne is a talented performer and does not need some campy, goofy gimmick to get over. The P.D. Williams thing. It's his last match in the company before the idiots in management get rid of him and they still could not give this thing a clean finish? Are you kidding me? Plus, look what happened after the match. P.D. gets pinned, loses his job, the crowd's giving him a standing ovation, they're chanting his name, he's got tears in his eyes, it should have been this big, dramatic, emotional moment, and it wasn't because Tanae and West would not shut up. They were talking over this whole thing. Tanae's going on and on about how, oh, I think I speak for the fans when I say that. Sh shut up! The fans don't want you to speak for them. They were speaking for themselves when they were chanting, PD, PD. Shut your freaking mouth. Let the crowd react to what's happening. Let the audience connect with the drama of the moment. When you talk over the whole thing, you completely prevent that from happening. And then afterward, they didn't fade to black while still playing the audio of the crowd chanting Petey's name. They didn't silently go to a commercial. They just cut away to an interview with Rhino in 3D like Petey losing his job meant absolutely nothing. And then, Rhino in 3D didn't even care about what just happened. They're supposedly the leaders of the front line, while one of the front line guys just lost his job, and it's not even important enough for them to mention it? This was complete, absolute bullcrap. And at, the, and at the next set of TV tapings, and every set of TV tapings, and every pay-per-view from now on, I hope that live crowd chants, We want Petey! We want Petey! All night long, until the idiots who didn't renew his contract pull their heads out of their asses and bring him back. <sighs> the empty arena match. I think the good execution saved this thing from being a train wreck. Now, they built up to it really well last week. They made it feel unique and not like a throwaway segment like a lot of the time when they do things like this. I thought the fight itself came off very well, actually, and the promos afterward were awesome. Now, on a whole, this segment was very compelling and effective, 
as far as selling the idea that these guys want to freaking kill each other. The problem is the one thing they did not do was justify the existence of the empty arena gimmick. They never gave a real reason why they were doing an empty arena match. They didn't do a th and, and they didn't do a thing in that empty arena match that they could not have done in an arena full of people. So the gimmick made no sense, which is ridiculous because when you've got Sting versus Kurt Angle, you don't need a gimmick. The gimmick is Sting versus Kurt Angle. That's all you need. Now, I did end up liking this despite the stupid gimmick. Although, why the why those guys came out to their full entrances with the music and the lights and the pyro? <laughs> What the hell was that? What the hell was that? There's no one in the arena to see it. Why are you doing entrances at all? 1080, you have even the slightest concept of how completely absurd that looked. Oh my god. So retarded. Oh, jeez. Uh, the, re the rest of the show was the usual mix of good and bad. Um, I enjoyed the X Division street fight. It was good action. Everybody worked hard. Uh, the street fight stipulation was totally unnecessary, but the match itself was good. Um, the six-man tag was good as well. I, I'm definitely not going to complain any time they want Sheik Abdul-Bashir to get pinned, although it would make me a lot happier if they just took him off the show entirely. Uh, fortunately, he didn't do that much here. Um, I liked the match, but why on earth they put Brutus Magnus on the losing team? I don't understand. I mean, he comes in with a lot of hype videos. He beats Sharkboy on Impact, he has a pretty decent match with Saban at the pay-per-view, and now all of a sudden he's losing in six-man tags? They just completely derailed this guy, which I don't understand at all, because, I mean, yeah, yeah, he is pretty green still, but the guy does have potential. And to end his undefeated streak after three matches was just a huge waste. Um, I like what they're doing with the beautiful people. Uh, they're definitely teasing that they're going to add a third member, uh, that'll be Madison Rain, guaranteed. Um, she had a match with Roxy that went up on, on a web match with Roxy that went up the other day where she was playing the heel. Um, she's and she's booked in a tag match with Taylor and the against the beautiful people next week. So look for Taylor to look for her to turn on Taylor in that match. Um, I think that's a good role for Madison Rain, and I'm I'm gonna say this: if and when she does join the beautiful people, can they please, please, please get rid of Kip James? Please, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. This, guy, this guy's role is completely pointless, and they basically said it on this show this week when Taylor said that he couldn't attack the babyfaces because of Spike TV's no man on woman violence rule. So just have Madison Rain be the fashionist and get Kip James the hell out of there. There is no reason on earth why he should even still be in this company, what with, all this, what with this talent purge they got going on. Also, uh, looks like some jobber bolts probably turning babyface when she gets her title shot against Kong. Probably not a bad idea since no one cares about her as a heel, but I don't know why they're doing this with her now when she just turned heel in the first place a few months ago. And I still say it should be Melissa in this spot. And um, I really hope, I just really hope they've got something good up their sleeves for that match. Although I kind of doubt it, um, Kong is still injured and Bolt. Quite honestly, I don't know what they see in this woman. She ha she has done absolutely nothing for me so far. She's not bad on the mic, I'll give her that, but she has not delivered in the ring and does not deserve this push at all, in my opinion. And finally, AJ Styles beat the crap out of Booker T again, and Samoa Joe made an appearance, or at least his arm made an appearance, uh, scaring the piss out of Scott Steiner. I like that a lot. Hopefully it will continue. The young guys have looked way too weak for way too long in this feud, and now it is time for them to start winning. Hopefully this stuff with Joe and AJ is the start of that. So, that about does it for this week. Um, like last week, this was a more enjoyable show than what they've been delivering on Impact lately, but there's still a lot of problems with this show, and they don't seem to be making any effort to fix them. Uh, one thing I will say is that the card for Destination X is already looking a hell of a lot better than the last few pay-per-view cards did. Um, I still don't know if I'm going to order Destination X, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it.